After all that work, it's time to dress up our GUI. We can do a lot to enhance the usability of our program through the layout of controls in logical functional groups, adding color and limited animation, and adding labels to our controls. Selecting the right font, size, and color is also an important enhancement. We'll find out how to add these bells and whistles on today's episode of... As you can see, our GUI needs a lot of help to make it presentable and usable. Where should we start? Well, let's start with the form itself. Let's change the form text property to something more descriptive than Form 1. In my case, I've named it Arduino Graphical User Interface in C Sharp. Kind of wordy, but it gets the point across. At this point, we can add the controls for the blue and green LEDs. First, let's make some room for these new controls by moving some of this stuff out of the way. Then, let's click and put two track bars on the form. Track bar there and another track bar below it. Let's make these a little wider. Same width as the first track bar. That will help us when we group them later on. Now let's also add two buttons to the form, one for each of the track bars, just as we had before. There's a button there and a button there. Get those positioned sort of close. Now we need to rename these controls. So the first track bar that we put on there, let's rename that to green bell and set its tick marks to 10 just like we did before on the first track bar tick uh, frequency is 10 and then the second track bar let's name it to blue bell and change its tick frequency to 10 also. So those are done. Let's change the buttons. Double click on or click on button one. Change its name to send green val and then We'll check this other button and change its, its name to send blue bell. We might as well change the text properties while we're at it. Text property will be send blue on that one. And we'll change the text property on that to send green. So the text properties are changed. Uh, those are labeled. Now we can go and make this work. So let's take the first new track bar that we've added, the send green track bar, the green val, and double click on it to create a scroll event for it. And then we will just essentially add the same code to it that we added to the blue track or the red track bar beforehand except we will change it to make it green instead of red and then we will double click the blue val track bar go back to the form the blue val track bar to get its cursor event 
and then we will place basically the same code only modified for blue in its scroll event. And that's it for the scroll bars. Now we need to create the click events for the buttons. So if you double click on the send green val button to get its click event, we will add the code to make it work similar to what we had before in the red button. And then we'll do the same thing for the send blue and get its code all set up for sending the blue value. You'll notice that there is a red line under the green and blue string variables and that's because we have not yet defined them at the top of the program. So right after we declare the public partial class form 1 you'll note that we have a private string variable called red we also have to add new variables for green and blue so add a comma after that green comma and blue that will add those variables and should remove all of the red lines from our variables down here. So that's good. We are now done with the C sharp part of the programming. Now we must modify the Arduino program to add the code for the additional LEDs. In the setup function, we need to add two additional output channels, one for each of the LEDs. So we'll add channel 5 for the LED, the green LED, and channel 6 for the blue LED. That will take care of adding the new channels, the output channels for it. Now we need to add the code in our case statement to handle each of these data values as they come in. So we'll add two new cases to our switch statement. We'll have a G, capital G case, which is the green LED intensity, and it's basically a copy of what we did for the R, except modified for the green with the new output channel. And the same thing for the blue LED. We now have a copy of that, which will write the intensity to the output channel 6 for it. So now we should be able to compile this and see that it works. So it is compiling. All we need to do now is download it to the Arduino program and get it running. Well, everything's set up for us to try the two new LED track bars, but first we'll need to change one parameter on each of the track bars that I forgot to change before. If we look at the code for the form, if you look at the red track bar, you'll notice that its maximum value is set to 255. We forgot to set those on the other two new track bars. So let's set that right now. The tick, the tick frequency is 10, but let's set its maximum value from 10 to 255 for that bar. And then we're going to do the same thing for this bar, 255. Okay, so now we're ready to try and run the form. So let's hit the green start button. And we do have a problem that we need to fix, apparently. Let's look at what the problem statement is. It says that it's the end of file is expected, but we don't have one. So if we look at our program listing here, you'll notice that I've got two braces two end braces in a row, one of which has got a red line under it. So let's get rid of that, and then that should fix our problem. 
we should be able to start our new GUI, which it does start. Let's put it over here on our view. And let's see if it works. Let's go ahead and try the red value. Let's send a red signal to the red LED and it lights up. Let's try the green LED. It lights up. And let's try the blue LED. And that lights up. It's time to start grouping the controls and adjusting their properties to make them more visible and usable. To save time, I've sped up the video and will try to narrate the important information as it is needed. Let's finish the LED controls. Make the text on each button 12 point and change the font to be the color of the LED it controls. Put the trackbar adjacent to its button and make them all symmetrical. Move this group of controls to the lower left of the form. Put a rectangle around them and make it purple with three point border width. Add a label and set its text property to read RGB LED values and set the font to 14 point, making its color blue and place it over the top of the rectangle. Let's group the servo controls together. Change the text box font size to 12 and set its text align property to center the text. Change the button's text properties to 12 point and leave the text black. Put a rectangle around the two controls, make it purple, and set its border width to 3 point. Add a label and set its text property to read Set Servo Angle. Set the font to 14 point and make its color blue and place it over the top of the rectangle. Next, let's work on the potentiometer values. Put a rectangle around the controls. Make it purple with a three point border width. Add a label. Set its text property to read potentiometer value. Set the font size to 14. Make its color blue and place it over the top of the rectangle. Add three labels beneath the progress bar. Put a zero in the first label, set its font size to 12 point, and make the bold property true. Next, put 100 in another label, set its font size to 12 point, and make the bold property true. And finally, add a label with percent full scale as its text property, set the font to 12 point, and make the bold property true. Change the text box font size to 12, make the bold property true, and set the text align property to center. Add a label, volts, next to the text box, make its text size 12 point, and set its bold property to true. Next, let's do the button count. Select the text box, make its font size 12 point, Set the bold property to true, put a zero for the text property, and set the text align property to center the text. Add a rectangle around the text box, make it purple, and set its border width to three point. Add a label, button press count, make the font size 14, set the color to blue, and move it over the top of the rectangle. Finally, let's end up with the LED buttons. Change the font size of both buttons to 12 point.
put a rectangle around them, make it purple, and set the border width to three point. Add a label at the top of the rectangle and set its text property to Toggle LED Pin 13. Set the font size to 14 point and make it blue. We have purposely left a large amount of room at the top of the form to include some images and a title. So let's do that now. Add a picture box to the upper left corner of the form. I downloaded the Visual Studio logo, so let's import that now. It is bigger than the picture box, so we need to set the size mode property to stretch image to make it fit. We can now add a second picture box to the upper right corner of the form to hold the Arduino logo that I previously downloaded. It is also too big for the picture box, so we again need to change the size mode property to stretch image to make it fit. And finally, let's add a title using a label to say Arduino Control Center. Make its font size 24, set bold to true, and make its color red. Now, with a few final adjustments, we're finished with the GUI. With all of the bells and whistles in place now, we can go ahead and try out our new form. So let's start it running. And then we can see how the window actually works. So let's send an angle 90 degrees. Send that angle. That worked pretty well. Let's adjust the potentiometer and see if anything works there. That's all functional. I'm going to press the button a couple of times, see what happens. That's okay. Let's toggle our LEDs. I'm going to turn that LED on. Now let's turn it off. And set some values on the red LED, the green LED, and the blue LED. Let's turn the green LED down. It's a little bit bright. Okay, so everything works on our modified and our beautified GUI. So that should do it for this series. Thank you for sticking with me through the whole thing. It turned out to be a lot longer than I had intended. But we've gotten through everything, and you should be able to create your own GUIs in C Sharp now that will work with your Arduino. So thank you for watching.